Ooh, phone call. Transfer bits. Ooh. Hello? Yes, yes, you can speak to me. Two bids from England. Okay, yep, uh, go on. Nine million for him. I mean, he was a good player for us last season, but to be frank with you guys, we told him that he could leave if we got a bit over 6.5 million. So as long as there's a percentage of next sale on it for us, I'm happy to see him go. Okay, that's good. Yep, no, that's a good profit for us as well. So we are both happy with that one. And what's the other one? Four million for him. From them. Well, we've got too much depth in that area. He's not willing to sign a new contract with us. So I think we can also let him go, to be honest. So we'll go ahead and accept both those deals. And I'll try and sort something out in terms of the start of Champions League qualifying. No worries. All good. See you later. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 132 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode. It could be quite a long one. We've got some transfer business that we have done since yesterday's episode. We've got the second qualifying round of the Champions League where we are taking on Romanian outfit CFR Cluj. We are going to do a squad run through before we get into that as well. So this could be quite a long episode potentially, but if you are looking forward to it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but first things first, I think the easiest way to start today's episode is just to recap our domestic results off the back of the end of yesterday's episode, which was the end of European season roundup, and as well as a league game against KA. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, we were waiting to see exactly who we would play in the second qualifying round here of the Champions League. It depended on the winner of a tie between Cluj and a team out of Armenia. I believe it was Ararat. Armenia, Cluj won that fairly comfortably, so they are going to be our opposition. In today's episode, a freestyle reputation club from Romania, the former team of our current Mazala here at Bolsunga, Kaelin Rakasan. So this could be a juicy matchup, but being freestyle reputation, we've got a good record in Champions League qualifying over the last few seasons. Hopefully we can get through this round fairly comfortably off the back of making the semi-finals of the Champions League at the end of last week. But as I said, we're going to start off with our results off the back of the end of yesterday's episode. And as you can see on screen as we make our way down, lots of green dots. We have been in very, very good touch winning all of our games quite comfortably and not conceding goals for the most part as well. So that is good leading into the start of the Champions League qualifying. We've made our way through to the quarterfinals of the Icelandic Cup, where we are going to be taking on a team who's quite high up on the table at this stage in Phil Kier. Of course, they are in second at the end of yesterday's episode. If we go and have a look at the table with us having won all 11 games in the league season today, we have an eight-point gap over HK, albeit they do have a game in hand on us. Phil Kier have dropped down to third, so they've dropped just a little bit off the back of yesterday's episode, but are still up there in terms of challenging for that Champions League spot come next European season. Currently, find themselves in that Europa League spot, and it is KA and Breda Blick who round out the Icelandic European qualifying spots so far. They find themselves in the Conference League qualifying spots, and a little bit of a gap back to teams like Vikinger, KR, and Vala as well. So that's what the league does look like. We're in great form coming into the start of European qualifying, as I said. Hopefully, this is going to be nice and easy for us off the back of making the semi-finals of the Champions League at the end of last week. But now that that's covered, we are going to have a quick look at what the other Icelandic teams are doing down in Conference League qualifying in the second round before we have a look at our transfers and what our squad looks like leading in to the start of this new European season. And down in the second qualifying round for the Conference League, it does look like two of the three Icelandic teams are entering in the second qualifying round. As far as I can tell, for some reason, HK have got themselves a pass into that third qualifying round, which is quite good for those guys. Hopefully this time, they can actually make the group stages of the Conference League, of course, after they made the Champions League group stages. Two seasons ago, but our ties down here involving other Icelandic teams, Phil Kier, who have started the season off quite well. They take on AAB 
from Denmark. And we make our way down a little bit further here on this list. And you can see that Breda Blick are the other team in the second qualifying round here for Conference League, and they take on an Israeli outfit in Hapoel Beersheba. And we'll keep an eye out throughout today's episode on how those two Icelandic teams do get on in Conference League qualifying. Hopefully they can pick up a few wins, make their way through to that third qualifying round where HK can join them and give us a bit of help for this season's coefficient try and build on our rise up to 13th. On that table, it's time for us to get through a bit of transfer business that we have done off the back of yesterday's episode because some of it is quite important. And here is all the business here on screen. Some of it not too important, it involves quite a few players you wouldn't be too familiar with in terms of the outgoings, but there's a few notable outgoings in there as well, which we might spend a little bit more time on. You can probably already know us, we've only spent 3.9 million in this current transfer window, but have received 15 million for our outgoing. So it's been quite a profitable transfer window here for us at Volson. We'll pick up from May because I believe it's about when we last checked in on this once we did our last load of free transfers over here on the left up to Joe Corcoran. We will start with the outs first off. A couple of young players leaving us here at Volsunga. Bjarnas on a two and a half star potential 18 year old striker. He has gone to HK for a fee of 60,000, which could rise up to 105,000. I believe there's a percentage of next sales clause included in that one. The next transfer in terms of a permanent out is another youngster who has gone to Akranes. This is Van Kusteren, 18-year-old midfielder out on the left. Had that three-star potential. I think it might have actually been a little bit lower than that when we let him go. Otherwise, we probably would have kept him around at the club. He goes to Akranes for £2,000 Then the first. Of our big transfers here at Volsunga in this most recent window. The top goal scorer from last season's Champions League has left the club, Matthias Aguirre, as we ran for a little bit. In today's episode, we are looking at starting Jonada for this upcoming European season. And Matthias Aguirre didn't have any more potential than what he had shown here at the club, according to our staff. So a big bid did come in for him from Arsenal, albeit he did tell us that he wanted to leave. We couldn't talk him around. We said we'd have to accept anything over the £6.5 million pound mark for him and when Arsenal came in with £9 million pounds plus a 40% of next sale clause in that deal. It was too good to turn down and Matthias Aguirre chose to go to Arsenal over quite a few other big destinations. So our Peruvian striker from last season who, as I said, did a great job for us in the Champions League among other competitions has left us for £9 million. Pounds. You can see there already valued a lot higher there at Arsenal, but that does mean we are going to have to stick with at least the initial stages. Joe Nata is our first choice striker here at Volsinger for this upcoming season. Didn't spend too long at Volsinger at all, really. It was mostly just 2031 domestically where he had an impact here at Volsinger. Played a little bit for us domestically at the start of 2032, so was really only here for about a year and a bit. We signed him for £500,000 and we let him go for £9 million. That's a very good bit of business there for the three-star rated striker in Matthias Aguirre. They did a great job for us, as I said, as our first choice striker last season. But hopefully, Joe Nata can make the step up. But we have signed a replacement on a loan to buy to come in for Matthias Aguirre, who does look quite promising as well. So hopefully, that can fill that void, even though we do have quite a bit of depth in strikers here at the club at the moment. But Matthias Aguirre, probably the biggest transfer of this past little bit that we have played. He has gone to Arsenal. For 9 million, we make our way up a little bit further. Charlie Shaw was a player we loaned out to championship clubs quite a bit. Never really played for us much in the first team here at Volsinger. We let him go because of some dipping potential that he had. He's a decent player and he has gone to Burnley in England for £1.1 million. Pounds, a player that we did sign on a free transfer, so that is not the worst deal either. We have sold one of our backup goalkeepers here at the club as well because on our left-hand side we've actually signed quite a few new goalkeepers here at Volsinger. So Thomas Diaz leaves us with that two and a half star potential that he had and two star current ability when he was at the club, the Uruguayan, who we did sign for around £500,000. We make a bit of a loss on him. He didn't develop quite as well as we were hoping he would. He goes to Montevideo City Talk for £180,000. And then probably the second biggest loss in this most recent transfer window, we suggested this might be the case in yesterday's episode because he didn't want to sign a new contract with us here at Volsinger and we did need to cut a little bit of fat in terms of our right wing options. Blagovest Ognanov 
has gone also to the Premier League and he has gone to Manchester United for £4 million. Unfortunately, no percentage of next sale clause included in that contract for the 26-year-old Bulgarian. To be fair, a decent price for him considering his value is pretty much in the ballpark of what we received for him for that transfer, but he leaves us also, having really only spent a year here at Volsinger, picked him up on a free transfer, so to get £4 million for him yet again is quite a good bit of business, was very good for us when we did use him, but in the end we had to choose between him and Zimmerman as a right-wing option with Patrick Nygaard being needed as a backup, being homegrown at club and in nation, and with him of course being the player who would not renew his contract, he was the one who we decided to let go of, a little bit disappointing because he did look quite good on the right wing, combining with Chaka Traore out on the left in the early stages this season, but we have let him go, only spent a short time at the club after we picked him up on a free from Manchester City, and is now at Manchester United, leaving us for £4 million, so that's already £13 million, in fact 14 when you consider Charlie Shaw that we have bought in here. So the club, Jorge, a player who did become homegrown at club a few seasons ago, the potential never really lived up to what we were hoping for him. We make a big loss on that sale, but he has gone to HK in Iceland, so don't mind that one quite as much, joining one of our fellow Icelandic clubs. Hopefully he can help them out come the start of Conference League qualifying. For them, he leaves us for £250,000. So that's quite a sizable outlay for a club like HK. And then Bjarki Bjarkas, all my other players who had been at the club, for the longest period of time, we bought him in a long time ago. He has gone to Italy to join up with Ascoli for £5,000. They signed him on a free transfer for the end of this Icelandic season, but we weren't going to use him anyway, so we just tried to get a little bit of money for that deal instead of letting him go on a free, and they agreed to buy him now for £5,000. We just get a little bit of compensation there for the many years that we have had Bjarki Bjarkas on here at Volsinger, picking him up on a free transfer all the way back in 2023, one of our first seasons, I believe that was in the top division, and in Europe, he has been with us for a long time, but over the last five or six years, has really only been an emergency backup for us, and we now have enough numbers in homegrown club and nation players that we could afford to let him go, so Bjarki Bjarkas on after quite a few years here at Volsinger, about 10 from what I can tell there, he has gone to Celi B in Italy to join up with Ascoli for the last few years of his career. And those are all the outs that we have made off the back of yesterday's episode. And we have bought in a couple of players to replenish those stocks, seeing as we did get rid of quite a few players. We start off with a free transfer here for Declan Spencer. He's a player we had at the club on trial quite a while ago. I say a while ago, a couple of seasons ago. In the end, he opted to go to LA Galaxy over us, he got waived by an MLS club, we tried to go in for him, yet a guinea joined another MLS club, got waived by them the whole way the MLS system works here in Football Manager, and finally we were able to get him without being contested for him, three and a half star potential goalkeeper, very similar to Joe Corcoran, but just a little bit older and a little bit better developed at this stage, he will be our backup goalkeeper for this upcoming European season being Scottish but also being Irish so he does count as a European player which is quite useful for the domestic competitions here and as you can see there joins us having spent a bit of time in the MLS off the back of starting his career off at Celtic and doing a decent job for those guys as well so Declan Spencer joins us as our backup goalkeeper next up we signed a few players off of the next gen list it took a fair while for some of these guys to join us the first of those is Rune Ballo. He is a 17-year-old Norwegian striker who can also play out on both wings. Already has two-star ability with four-star potential. He looks like a good pickup for around about the £50,000 mark just to make sure no big clubs came in for him once his contract did expire at the end of June. So he joins us for not much money and does look like a very promising talent there. Does Rune Ballo. He will sit in our under-19s and hopefully develop nicely over the next few seasons, joining him down there in the under 19s is Benjamin Christiansson. He joins us from Bromby, does the Danish 19 year old. We're going to train him up as a right winger, two star current ability, three star potential. So, in the end, not quite as good of a transfer as I was hoping he would be, but there's certainly a little bit of upside for him there. And he has gone out on loan to Phil Kier. So, if he doesn't fulfill that three star potential that he does look like he has at the moment being on loan at Phil Kier, hopefully they can pick him up. If that is not the case and he can stay in Iceland, 
and be a useful homegrown nation player for one of the other Icelandic clubs in European competition. The last of our young pickups off that next gen list was Redeem Kahu. We signed him for £52,000 off of Slavia Prague yet again. A striking option, so we do now have a lot of young strikers coming through at the club, albeit it's never too bad to have good striking options. I do feel like, yet again, two-star current ability, three-star potential. He will be in the under-19s for a few years, only being 17 years old. But again, does look like he's a few good building blocks there to potentially become a useful homegrown club and nation player for us in the future here. At Volsunga, and our last signing is yet again another striker on a loan-to-buy deal. This is a player who we did sign to replace Matthias Aguirre because I just wanted a little bit better depth in that position after letting go of Matthias Aguirre and this is Adam Saki. He is a 20-year-old who we have got off of Raya Casablanca in Morocco, was not playing much football at all because the Moroccan teams only take part in the CAF Champions League, but he looks like a really good talent for a young age, absolutely love his technicals and his mentals, his physicals aren't too bad either. He kind of looks like Benjamin Rubio on steroids. His passing could use a little bit of work, as could his off the ball. But apart from that, he looks like a really good striking option. Four and a half star potential, two and a half star current ability. We have loaned him for this season, but he is going to be joining us on a permanent deal for £5.5 million come a year's time. And he is going to be the backup to Joe Naha because with him being a foreign striker from Morocco, he cannot quite fit into our first rotation for the domestic games, but is certainly a very, very good backup should we need him, especially in the UEFA Champions League, where those foreign rules do not matter. So a good promising young striker there, a player who I think looks quite a bit better than the player that we did let go of there in Matthias Aguile. So I think we might have traded up there for a little bit of a profit. And as you can see on screen there, really good start to his career over in Morocco at Raya Casablanca, hopefully. He can step up here to the demands of Champions League football here for us at Volsunga. So that is a wrap-up of the transfer business that we have done off the back of yesterday's episode. We're still looking to loan out a few players as well by the end of today's episode when the transfer window here in Iceland does close. But now we're going to go through our squad run-through before the start of the Champions League qualifying against Cluj. This might take a little while as well, but we'll get through this as quickly as as we can, first off, we will go through our first choice 11 and then start to run through the backup players. We start off with our goalkeeper, Peter Huel Lerbeck. Three star current ability, three star potential as well, just developing nicely enough, just improving a little bit off the back of where he was this time last year. Still a very solid option for us in goal is the Norwegian international goalkeeper, our right back. Yet again, Lee Van Tam, he's been good since he joined us this time last season, and he looks like a good option at right back, pretty similar to where he was last season, may have improved just slightly from when we did first sign him around about this time last season, and out at left back, we do have Kenny Boreal, he has just regressed somewhat in his progress, as you can see there in the bottom right of the screen, but that was probably because he did suffer an injury in the latter stages of the Champions League last season, you can see he's starting to work his way up back towards where he was, is still a good option for us with that three-star current ability and three and a half star potential in the centre back partnership we are going to go with for the initial stages of Champions League qualifying this season. Ali Ramadan, four star current ability and potential. He is progressing nicely, quite clearly. The best centre back at the club, and alongside him is going to be Elias Anderson, who on paper looks like he should be the second best centre back, especially with that aerial threat that he does have 16 hitting, 14 jumping, reach, three star current ability and free star potential, even though he has regressed slightly from where he was at this time last season. Hopefully a little bit more football at a higher level will help him bounce back sooner rather than later. Then we make our way forward to the midfield. This is exactly the same as it was last season. Basaro Gay in the DM role. Yet again, he is unhappy about not being able to move to a big club, but we're just going to have to hold on to him now because he is far too important a player for us. In that halfback role, there's some red arrows there, but he is actually progressing in a positive way. I think he's our most important player here at the club, being almost that third centre back in the DM role. A very, very good option there is Basaro Gay. Alongside him, the highest rated player at the club in the box-to-box -box midfield role 
in Lasana Dombia. He is progressing greatly. We have had some big bids in for him from the likes of RB Leipzig coming towards the mark of £30 million, but he is such a good player. It's going to take him wanting to leave before we actually let him go, and he's progressing really nicely since we bought him this time last year. Four and a half star current ability, five star potential for the young French wonder kid, the 21 year old. And alongside them is the former Cluj man himself in Kalen Rakasan. He's been great for us since he joined us a few seasons ago, the 25 year old Romanian with that three and a half star ability and that four star potential. As I said, done a great job for us over the past few seasons. Hopefully, he can continue that. In this upcoming one, and then we've made a few changes to our front three. Nicholas Zimmerman is back as the right winger, of course, with that sale of Blagoviest Ogninov. He has really kicked into gear in terms of his progress since April this year. It was pretty good for us in the Champions League last season as well. So Nicholas Zimmerman back in the first team after that brief change that we did make going into yesterday's episode for Blagoviest Ogninov, but with him not wanting to renew his contract, he has left the club. And Nicholas Zimmerman gets that first choice right wing spot back. Out on the left hand side, Chaka Traore comes in at left wing. Certainly an improvement on what we previously had there. And Frederick Larson, the Ivorian 27 year old, very, very lethal in front of goal. And hopefully he can prove that here in the upcoming Champions League. And the other change that we have made to our front three, obviously emphasised by the sale of Matthias Aguero. And we did suggest this was going to be the case. In yesterday's episode, is Jonada is now starting for us. The three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential Brazilian come Frenchman. He has been wanted by some big clubs over the past few seasons. We are going to give him a chance to show what he is all about, and hopefully he can start to fulfill some of that potential in the Champions League. His arrows are on the downgrade, but he does look like he should be a good option for us with that high potential. He does have, and now we start to make our way through our bench for these Champions League games as well as the other players who are registered for this competition. Andy Harwood is going to be our backup left back but can also play right back. He has made a little bit of progress since this time last season. The other player who is going to be covering one of our wing back spots is Ian Carlo, albeit he can only cover that right hand side. He's pretty much holding steady since this time last year, albeit starting to make a good little bit of progress over the last month or so. Two and a half star current ability and potential for the recent Icelandic international. Our centre-back backup is Tiago Polo. He's just regressed a little bit since this time last season. One of the reasons I did think we might get rid of him in the first choice 11, but he has performed for us pretty well when we have had to call upon him in the first 11. And alongside him as a centre-back backup is Gaetano de Prisco, who has also regressed a little bit since this time last season, but still a good option for us with that three-star current ability. And potential, the rest of the players on the bench, in terms of our midfield options, we do have Karel Giroud, three and a half star current ability and potential. He continues to improve as a great midfield bench option for us here. At Volsinger is the Czech midfielder. We've got a young winger who's come for our youth intake on the bench at the moment. That's because Frederick Larson is actually currently away on Olympic duty. So this is Valhim Gardasson. He is a two star current ability three-star potential winger who can cover both sides. He'll just be on the bench for us while Frederick Larson is away at the Olympics during this qualifying for the Champions League. You can see he's made quite good progress over the last season. If we can give him some game time, hopefully he could be a useful squad player for us over the next few years of this save as a backup striker on the bench, Adam Saki, who you have seen just before, and the other bench option that we do have who can cover one of the wings as well as the midfield and up front, if we do need him, the ever versatile Fabio Maliano, very good player, three star current ability and potential, who's pretty much holding solid from where he was in terms of progress at this time last season. And then we make our way down to the players who aren't quite featuring on the bench at this stage. We do have Patrick Nygaard with two and a half star current ability and potential, absolutely no progress made from him since this time last season. A player that we did need to keep over someone like Blagoviest Ognyov because of the homegrown club and nation regulations. Brynja Galtis on as a backup out and out DM and player who's pretty similar in terms of his progress to where he was last season with that two and a half star current ability. And potential, we make our way down a little bit further. You did see Declan Spencer just before. Paul Stein Anason is still there as a backup midfielder who can also play on the right wing, very similar to the likes 
of Fabio Maliano, albeit he has regressed quite a bit in terms of his progress since this time last season. The next player on our list, we'll have a quick look at Frederick Larson, currently unregistered, but we'll get that sorted out as soon as he does come back from the Olympics. His progress actually dropped quite a bit since we did get rid of him from the first team, but he is still a very useful backup for us as a left winger with that two and a half star current ability and potential for the Danish 26 year old who is our club captain. Our emergency backup in terms of being a wing back is Stamatas Chatzakis, another player very similar in terms of his progress to where he was this time last season. Next up, we have a centre back emergency backup as well as an emergency DM option there in Serdan Dedic. He's pretty similar yet again to his progress last season. He'll get some game time if we absolutely need to and we suffer quite a few injuries in that centre back position next up on this list is going to be Sig Pjorsson he is another homegrown player here at the club who's going to probably feature more so for the under 19s but another centre back who could also play in that DM role has a little bit more potential than Serdan Dedic we might try and give him a little bit more game time than Dedic if we do get a few injuries in those positions but at three and a half star potential we'll try and give him a little bit of game time if we can, you can see there he has made quite good progress since around about this time last season. And one of the last players who is registered for the Champions League, same case there as the Pjorson, is Valdemarson. He is a midfielder for us here who came for our youth intake a few seasons ago, has made a little bit of progress since this time last season. A box-to-box -box midfielder for the most part who has that two-star current ability and three-star potential. And that, I think, wraps up our squad going in to this season's Champions League qualifiers. Hopefully that didn't drag on too long despite the fact we also went through a bit of transfer stuff before then as well. But that's where our squad does look like going into the current European season. This is a team that we are going to be starting this first leg of this tie against Cluj with. And of course the main change that we have made to our bench with Frederick Larson being on Olympic duty is that Gardasson is there where Frederick Larson would usually be. But apart from that, we are pretty much at full strength for this first game of Champions League qualifying. Without any further ado, we'll come back shortly from Romania for the first league of the second qualifying round against Cluj. And we'll have to wait till the 19 minute mark for our first highlight of the second qualifying round of first league. And we do have a free kick here so far. We have been dominating this game, four shots to one, but Cluj look to get something going here on the counter attack off the back of that free kick. But thankfully, Levan Tam Heads that back to Ali Ramadan. We do look to play out from the back here and hopefully open the scoring sooner rather than later. These should be games that we are winning fairly comfortably, you would like to think, considering that we did, of course, make the semi-finals of the Champions League only a few episodes ago, dropping all the way back to the second qualifying round for the Champions League. Some short passing here on our right-hand side. Kalen Rakasan will rocket that past the goalkeeper. At his near post, and it is the former Cluj man who scores, and he's certainly not shy about the celebrations either, which is quite interesting. Usually, you see the players be a bit more reserved there, but Kalen Rakasan, that is certainly not the case. So he might not be a favoured personnel of the club for much longer, because he does give Volsunga a 1-0 lead after 20 minutes. And only a few minutes off the back of that opener, it is a throw in here for Cluj, albeit deep inside their own half, albeit they do make their way up towards the halfway line, but a good slide tackle there from Lasana Dumbia does get position back for us. Kalen Rakasan tries to put that top right corner, comes off the post, and Latika is able to collect that still 1-0 about halfway through the first half. And up to the 36-minute mark for our next highlight, we do have a corner. Lasana Dumbia tries to put that at the near post. There's no one there, but he does retreat and get position back for us here outside the box. Kalen Rakasan from a long way out. He will pick up a double. And the former Cluj man so far is doing all of the damage for us here against his former team. That is a wonderful strike from just outside the box into the top right corner. And with 10 minutes to go here in the first half of the first league away from home, it is 2-0 Volsunga. And not too long off the back of that second goal there to the former Cluj man and Kalen Rakasan. It is a goal kick here for the Romanian team, and Stoylan is in behind here and gets beyond our defence. A great chance there for Cluj to grab a goal back, but puts that well over the bar. Still 2-0 late here in the first half. And that is half time in the first leg of the second qualifying round tie in the Champions League. A very good first half from us there. A lot of shots on target, and Kalen Rakasan putting both of his away. Of course, the former Cluj man to give us 
a 2-0 lead. We'll make no substitutions here at halftime because I'm pretty happy with how things are going and hopefully we can extend that lead here in the second half. And about eight minutes into the second half, we do have our first highlight over a throw in there for Clues, but they give that ball straight to Lee Van Tam. That is poor from them. He starts to make his way into the opposition half. Lasana Dumbia over there for Chaka Traore and rockets that into the top right corner. And early on here in the second half, we do grab our third goal. That was really, really poor that from the opposition from that throw. And they just gave the ball straight to Lee Van Tam made his way into the opposition half and from there we just had the numbers nice finish there from Chaka Traore to make it 3-0 and we do have a highlight immediately from the restart off the back of that third goal just off the back of the restart here in the second half to put us 3-0 up Chaka Traore making the most of the ball which was given away there to Levan Tam off of that Cluj throne and they do look to play out from the defense here start to make their way towards the halfway line and might try and get their way back into this game otherwise it could be big trouble for them if they need to overturn a deficit. Going back to Iceland, they try and play a ball over the top, but Elias Anderson does get possession back for us here, and Nicholas Zimmerman makes his way down the right-hand side. Lasana Dumbia back there to Zimmerman, giving a little bit of space and curves that just inside the far post. And early on here in the second half, we do make it 4-0 Volsunga, and we might be on here for a big scoreline in the first leg, potentially one, which might mean that we don't have to come back and show you guys the second leg, but a good finish there, and a quick double, and we make it 4-0 early in the second half. Yeah. And unfortunately, we do have an injury in this first leg of Champions League qualifying, in this first qualifying round that we are taking part in. Unfortunately, Lee Van Tam is forced from the field here with 25 minutes left, Ian Carlo to replace him at right back. We'll have to check on that off the back of this game and just see how serious that one is. And we are now up to the 72 minute mark. It is a free kick here for Cluj, but they pump it deep. We do get possession back, albeit give it straight back to them here. And they get a bit of space here down our left hand side. They try and play that back into the mix of it. Some good work from Bussero game. We might have a chance here on the counter attack. Jonata finds Rakasan has been a bit quiet so far, his Jonata, but is linking up quite well with our fellow front free Zimmerman and Chaka Traore, as well as Kalen Rakasan doing the goal scoring duties well enough for us here so far in this first tie. And there's a ball there for Jonata, but somehow that comes off the post. Big chance for him there. Still 4-0 with 15 minutes left. And off the back of that highlight, we will also make our last two substitutions as well because we do have two players down to a red heart, Lasana Dumbia and Basaro Gay. We will bring Giroud on for Dumbia in the box-to-box -box midfield role. And in terms of our DM options, I think the best one might be that we bring on Thiago Polo for Gay and put Ali Ramadan into that DM role for the last 15 minutes. And not too long off the back of those last few substitutions, we do have a throw in here inside the final third of Cluj. Can we make this 5-0 before we do head back to Iceland? For the second leg, that would be very nice because I think that would be a big enough advantage that we could just show you guys the highlights of that second leg. And we are on the attack here. Nice ball there for Nicholas Zimmerman. He puts that away. He's onside. And that gives us that 5-0 lead that we were looking for. Potentially going back to Iceland. Some good passing there inside the final third off the back of that front. Zimmerman played that one up to Jonata. Plays that out to Traoré. And it's well time run that from Zimmerman. Puts that away past the goalkeeper at his near post. 5-0 Volsinger with 10 minutes left in the first leg. And not too long off the back of that fifth goal, we do have a corner. Kalen Rakasan puts this one into the mix. A great chance there for Jonata to grab a goal, but good save there. It was directly at the Cluj goalkeeper, and it does remain 5-0 with only a few minutes left. And we are inside injury time in this one. It's been a pretty comprehensive performance, especially in the second half off the back of that double in the first half there. To Kalen Rakasan, two goals to Zimmerman, one to Chaka Traore, who picks up man of the match for his goal. And he picked up a few assists as well, I believe. And that is a nice, comfortable 5-0 win in our first game of Champions League qualifying with that scoreline. I think that means we'll just come back soon and show you guys the highlights from the second leg as well as check in with the results for the other Icelandic teams down in the conference. See what we'll go for just a little bit and see how serious that injury was to Levan Tam. And unfortunately, it is quite a serious one. He has picked up a twisted ankle. Is going to be out. For four to seven weeks, that looks like he's going to miss most of Champions League qualifying. Luckily, we do have backups there in Ian Carlo and Stamatas Chartzakis, but that is an early injury 
for us here in Champions League qualifying, but it shouldn't impact things too badly for the second qualifying round. We'll come back shortly and show you guys the highlights from the second leg off the back of that 5-0 win away from home in the first. And we are back having played the second leg against Cluj, but before we do get into that, unfortunately we actually suffered a few injuries even before that second leg against those guys. It was during a midweek game against Vikinger, which we did pick up a 2-0 win in in the league, but we did lose Jonada with a groin strain. He is out for two to five weeks. That means that our new signing, Saki, is probably going to have to step up there to be our first choice striker for the large majority of the remainder of Champions League qualifying. So that is a bit of a blow there for our new first choice option in Jonata. Also, Paul Stein Anas on one of our more emergency backup Mazalas here at the club these days is out for about two weeks with some pulled ankle ligaments. But luckily, that did not impact us too negatively in that second leg against Cluj. And that is because we absolutely wiped the floor of them here in Iceland. It did take us a little while to get the first goal in this one. We picked out Nicholas Zimmerman there at the far post at the half hour mark to give us a 1-0 lead going into half time. But we really clicked into gear here in the second half. And it started with a good goal here to Lasana Dumbia from the edge of the box. Rockets that into the top left corner to make it 2-0 at the 66 minute mark was when we made it 3-0, so we came home here with a very, very wet sail, Chaka Chare being the goalkeeper here at his near post, and not too long off the back of that, we did make it 4-0, and really did click into gear at this point. We did bring Fabio Mariano on at this stage, and he really did click us into gear up front after Alam Saki did struggle while he was on the pitch for that first hour, and we really did start to put the foot down here in these last 13 minutes, Chaka Chare picking up another one there, at the 76 minute mark, then at the 82 minute mark, Ian Carlo on the ball down the right hand side, Patrick Nygaard. Back to Carlo, squares that for Mariano for a tap in for him to pick up a double off the bench. And then at the 84 minute mark, we made it 7 0 on the day and 12 0 on aggregate as Fabio Mariano picked up his hat trick. So good to see that we can still use him as a very lethal striking option should we need to when Saki doesn't perform, which on this day, wasn't really the case with that 6.4 rating but Fabio Mariano coming off the bench with a hat trick and as you can see we absolutely wiped the floor with Cluj 12-0 on aggregate so quite thankful that we didn't come back for that second leg and try and commentate all of it because my voice might be gone off the back of all that stuff that we did do come the start of today's episode but that does mean that we are through to the third qualifying round of the Champions League in tomorrow's episode and our opposition in that one is going to be Sparta Prague. That is who we have got in the third qualifying round. They are, of course, from the Czech Republic. Three and a half star reputation club. So a slight step up from what we did take on there in Cluj. They're actually a little bit higher rated in terms of their reputation than we are here at Volsinger. Somehow still off the back of making the semifinals of the Champions League last season. Still we're somehow only a three star reputation club. But still hopeful that we can get past those guys in the third qualifying round of the Champions League in tomorrow's episode. One player that we can keep an eye out on in that one is Peter Wozniak at the back. He was a player I was looking at signing as an alternative to Elias Anderson here a few seasons ago. But before we do wrap up today's episode, we will also check in on how the Icelandic teams did get on down in Conference League qualifying. And unfortunately, despite a 3-1 win in the second leg, Phil Kier have been knocked out by AAB by an aggregate scoreline there of 5 4, so Phil Kier already out of Conference League qualifying. But Breda Blick did beat their Israeli opposition by 3 2 on aggregate after picking up a 2 1 win in the second league. So that does mean we are going to still have two Icelandic teams in that third qualifying round of the Conference League because HK do jump in at that stage and hopefully they can do a decent job for us there down in the Conference League. And before we do wrap things up fully for today's episode, we have actually done a few more transfers. On deadline day here in Iceland, we loaned out a number of players here from our club who were not going to be registered for the Champions League campaign, but we did also sell one player in for quite a hefty fee as well. That was Andreas Boom as a German goalkeeper who was lingering in our under-19s, did have quite a bit of potential, but was kicking up a fuss. We picked him up on a free transfer a few seasons ago and £3 million for him at the age of 20. Did look like quite a good bit of money. So he has gone to join her for Berlin in the Bundesliga. And with that money, we did buy a few more youngsters who might hopefully develop into good squad players for us being homegrown club 
and nation over the next few years as they can linger in our under-19s for now. The first of those is Abdullah Kore. He has gone back out on loan to Stella Club in the Ivory Coast. Two-star current ability, three-and-a-half-star potential. Central defender who we picked up for £35,000. Next up is Pedro Lemos. He looks like quite a promising wing-back out of Portugal with that one-and-a-half-star current ability, three-and-a-half-star potential. We signed him from Sporting for £800,000. So hopefully... He can end up being a good backup right back for us and might start to usurp someone like Ian Carlo or Stamatas Chatzakis over the next few seasons. Next up, we have Philip Jakupov, who is a promising central defender, one and a half star current ability, four star potential for the 17 year old Czech Republican, who we did sign from tomorrow's opposition in Sparta Prague for £400,000. And to round off our signings from this past transfer window, we then have a player called Clogieri who we did sign from Basel in Switzerland, 17-year-old midfielder with three-and-a-half star potential, one-star current ability. He joins us for the price of £180,000, those players. Not ones who are going to feature too much for the first team over the next few years, but hopefully a couple of them can develop into good options for us, as I said, being homegrown in club and nation, so we can use them in a few seasons' time. But I think that does it for the absolute bumper episode that today's was, we wrapped up the transfer window, did our squad run through and bet Cluj in the second qualifying round of the Champions League. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until tomorrow, we will come back and play Sparta Prague in the third qualifying round of the Champions League. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.